welcome to another uh, video podcast of Politicus, and we're here with um, Elena de Silva Hughes, the executive director of the Immigrant Assistance Center, yes. uh, based out of New Bedford, Massachusetts. So exactly. thank you for joining us today here at our national uh, Portuguese American yeah. conference. Um, we're, we're happy to have you. So tell me a little bit about yourself. So first of all, the Immigrant Assistance Center was started by the Portuguese for the Portuguese immigrants that were arriving in 1971. And basically the mission was to help immigrants overcome language, cultural, and economical barriers and sort of integrate them into the American way of life. That was our mission in 1971 when the Portuguese our father, our funding, fa funding father started. The mission is exactly the same, except what happened is we help immigrants from all over, from all ethnic groups. I would still say that today we still say the largest concentration of Portuguese speakers that we say is we service about 3,000 um, non-English speaking elders who are Portuguese who immigrated for many many years mm -hmm. but unfortunately a lot of them have less than a third grade education and continue to come to the center looking for guidance and assistance so that is probably one of the largest Portuguese population that we serve not to say that we also serve a lot of Portuguese families and students and all of that but our at the Immigrants Assistance Center we are actually, all, all of us are bilingual, bicultural. We speak five languages, Portuguese, Spanish, Cape Verdean Creole, and French. And of course, we're all English speakers. But we basically, it's important to reflect the immigrant population that we serve. I, myself, Portuguese. I was born in Madeira uh, when I left there when I was 10 years old in 1971. And I've been at the Immigrants Assistance Center for 34 years, and I've been running the organization for, I'm the executive director for 20, going on 23 years. That's so, excellent. It's a very long time. That's, that's, uh, it's, a, it's a very good service that you provide to yes. the immigrant community, helping them navigate the minutia and bureaucracy, um, yes. especially when they're not English speaking. And helping them become U.S. citizens, which is amazing. Right. Yeah, I'm always amazing that how many people we've helped, thousands and thousands and thousands since our existence, becoming our uh, becoming U.S. citizens. And we've seen, especially now with the elections with mm -hmm. President Trump, our, our people becoming citizenship has quadrupled. So okay. in the past years, we've helped about 175 now become U.S. citizens. We're up to 975 in just one year, which is fantastic, because that's what we want. We want our immigrant population, and I'd say the majority are Portuguese who mm -hmm. become U.S. citizens and become registered voters, and we really think that is the best way to integrate our population into the American way of life. Well, you know, we at Pelkas are advocates for having people be involved uh, civically and oh, do their civic duty of voting, so we thank you for your yeah, service and, you, and helping you, them become you. American citizens and being able to become part of the voter population. Absolutely. Um, so what are some things about uh, your, your role uh, as executive director that you think are going very well and, uh, and, and some things that you, some, some factors that you think could be improved? Um, you know, given the work that the, that your organization does? Well, I'd have to say that, I, and I'm just going to give you a number. In the past, we would service about 7,000. We have about 7,000 clients per year, mm -hmm. again, all different ethnic groups. And I have to say that our biggest challenge became right after President Trump got elected, our numbers went up. We, we increased 30 percent. So mm -hmm. now we're like to nine th over 9,000 clients that are coming into the center seeking a lot of them immigration services, becoming U.S. citizens, which is fantastic, or just basically coming in for array of services. And I have to say that our biggest challenges has always been try, we have, we're a staff of eight mm -hmm. and we're in school, so we also have a staff member that is in the school, in, it's a contract through the Immigrants Assistance Center and I have a staff that that's all for this. She works three hours at school okay. with immigrant youth at risk. Okay. And so, uh, as I would say, the biggest challenges that we've had has been actually making sure that we have, we sustain our programs, having funding to be able to continue to provide these amazing, vital, critical services right, right. now to our immigrant community. So fundraising has been something that we have been doing a lot, mm -hmm. and it's good because we have seen an increase in funding sources, which is extremely important, mm -hmm. because in order to keep up the demand, we need to raise money. So I would say that has been our biggest challenge, uh, has been um, has been 
making sure that we have funding because we're all based in need. So right. in other words, we, we, because we have our pulse in the, in the population that we serve, so we basically we know what the needs are. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's where we, I, as being the executive director, I completely focus on the need. After I find, after we know the need, we, we address the need automatically. Mm -hmm. And then we look for funding. So it's not, so we just, we're basically um, driven by the need of our population, especially the immigrant population, especially now since we all, you know, immigration has been such a hot topic mm -hmm. constantly. Yeah. So we're hoping, you know, I'm still hoping after all these years of being there that there's gonna be some kind of immigration reform, which I probably could have to tell you that I don't think anything is going to happen. <laughs> And then again, we will have elections and immigration reform will get played as a political football by both by the Democrats and the Republicans. Right. I mean, it's kind of the, the, the way things are, right? It's uh, one of those things that everybody talks about. But, but nothing happens. Nothing happens. Um, hopefully that will change soon, though. We oh. want to be optimistic. Oh, we want to maintain I, I, optimism. I'm trying to be. I'm right. trying to be. So um, tell me a little bit about why you decided to come to this inaugural National Portuguese American Conference. Well, first of all, I, I, I mean, being Portuguese, I'm always very concerned about our, our what's going on in Portugal and what's going on here in the United States. And I just felt that it was extremely important for me to be here and listen to our speakers this morning. I, one of the things I'm always very concerned is, is that we always have to mentor. Like, yeah. I'm always mentoring young mm -hmm. women. I think that is, I, I think that as women, as in as Portuguese women, as they mentioned, we always have to make sure that we have, we, in other words, put forward the, the, youth, the youth, the young women, and mentor them so they can take over because they are our future. So I, it's, um, what I find is, is extremely important that we need, as women, need to create leaders, in, either in the political sector, either in becoming judges, I think that, that is, is so vital for us to make a mark in, in the United States. And, and, and as we know, power is, comes with voting and mm -hmm. power also becomes, um, is how we are going to be extremely successful. I always say, my parents did not immigrate to the United States. Mm -hmm. they, get, they immigrated to give us a better life. And I have an obligation as Madeiran and as Portuguese and as, as a woman, mm -hmm. that I need to make sure that I in any way disappoint my parents. That's that's a, that's a, a good mission to have always. Exactly. Um, just uh, some parting thoughts as to how you feel about Palkis and our initiatives and all that we do for the community as a voice. First, I have to tell you that I am extremely impressed when I walked in and I saw so many uh, Portuguese Americans and Portuguese, and so I'm very, very, very v impressed. And I think that you, I think being in Washington D.C., you play a vital role because I'm in Massachusetts and I am in New Bedford, mm -hmm. and I think making sure that we all hear that you since you're in Washington be able to become our voice because mm -hmm. I can't come here all the time so become our voice for our needs and in in, in the Portuguese community and also th and it's important for us being Portuguese to have a seat at the table wonderful I think you just basically quoted our website word for word have you been doing homework <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we just have the same mission. Uh, that's that. Well, that's a good mission to have. Thank you Absolutely. so much for joining us You're today. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you.